there's one thing I love to do with my builds, it's finding different styles and flavors to those builds and different classes. It's finding a different take on tried and true methods, going so far as to revolving a build around a singular concept. This concept is going to be based on dexterity scaling, but using a two-hander. We're going to be a melee expert. The way I think about this is like Darth Maul wielding that dual uh, bladed lightsaber and other fantasy RPGs, the twin blade, a spear, or a glaive in two hands. Being extremely agile and a great incredible threat in melee. So the core of the build centers on using two handers, getting great weapon master, but scaling with dex. The benefit over strength is that we actually get to scale our AC and our initiative. So we're gonna be fast, mobile, we're gonna act early in the turnover, and we're gonna have a lot of options. The best way to do this is to go monk. With dexterous attacks at level one, you can use your monk weapons, these weapons that, you know, normally that would scale with strength. You know, you have your spear, your glaive, you can actually scale them with dex now. In act three, we're gonna take this build to the moon. And this is to as soon as you get to Rivington and the first shop, Armory, you can buy the Dancing Breeze, a finesse two-handed glaive that is not only just aesthetically pleasing, has an awesome AoE attack, but really, really fits the archetype of that twin blade, that glaive, that blade dancer, that how I envision it. And I'm going to get into it here. So getting into character selection, I think for all the origin characters, Shadowheart is the most appropriate. It's very in line with the Dark Justice CR theme, and of course, the Shower Spear of Evening, if you go that route, is just so, so good with this build. It's the best variant for this build. Now, if this is going to be a custom, your main character, your MC, my number one rule is going to be the rule of cool. So whatever is most aesthetically pleasing to you, I would go with Dragonborn looks awesome. Elf, Drow, Human, Half Elf, Wood Elf, all those I think are very, very appropriate when you think of a nimble, agile, light, medium wearing female armor that's wearing a glaive, spear, dancing, and out of combat, you know, uh, the Blade Dancer, right? Like I think about Aurelia from League of Legends, one of my favorite champions. You know, just super high mobility. And as a melee class, some notables are going to be or just because the surviving on 1 HP is incredible. And Savage Attacks, getting an extra die on your melee is very, very, very good. Now for class, early in the game, you're just going to go Monk. It's very difficult to justify dipping early into other marshals. Like, you could go rogue, but then all you get is sneak attack, and once you get to five, you have a major drop-off. If you really want to min-max it, you can go rogue. You'll be the skill monkey of your party. You would just adapt your background to whatever proficiency you want, and then you would utilize sneak attack in the early game. Then go monk at level five to get extra attack, and then once I get to the spreadsheet section, you can abide by that. And the abilities are going to be laid out like this. Now, the abilities are very flexible. I always like to go my primary dex or strength. I'm going to go to 17, and then I like to go 16 in con because I don't like to reinvest anymore. Now, if you go monk, it might be worth it to go wisdom as you'll be unarmored in the early game, and you get that wisdom modifier to add to your AC. So in this case, we'll have plus 2, plus 3. We'll have a plus 5 total AC being unarmored, and a lot of, a lot of the good early game gear for monk that's going to help your deck scaling because again we're going to be a weapon based monk we're going to use the quarter stats we're going to use those versatile weapons use them with two hands and we're going to benefit from great weapon master while getting good initiative from decks damage scaling from decks and of course ac from deck all right so back to the spreadsheets my last build guide i didn't really need it as the lock it in just it's not really you don't need really need a spreadsheet for it. it's kind of just there's one way to build it there's not a lot of variety this is very very different now typically the blade dancer is going to be a dual wielder for me i think of you know what i thought talked about like a twin blade from the souls games you know a female fantasy warrior like the brave lucina we're in a, we're, uh, using a spear other characters that are using a glaive like if you think about uh the three kingdoms novel and you think about a lot of the chinese uh warlords you know one of the most uh, utilized Chinese weapons are those glaives and spears and, you know, uh, Lu Bu dancing around with it, like just destroying hordes of enemies, you know, it's something to think about. That's kind of where I get the whole two-hander, but we want to be dex-based. When you think about a strength, you think about, you know, the more guts character that's just absolutely massive, doing a lot, a lot, a lot of damage, wearing heavy armor and not being super agile, not really damaging attacks. He's just taking the brunt of the damage from the front line and really just is completely reliant on his heavy armor. This is different. We're going to scale deck, so we're actually going to have a much, much higher AC with medium armor in the late game. And we're going to have a very good AC in the early game by utilizing Monk, 
wisdom modifier and dex modifier now to get into the build here's the ability void layout i did show you something different in the level up so it really as long as you go dex con and uh, a little bit of wisdom here or strength whatever you want you can do that as soon as you get level one monk you get dexterous attacks what does this mean anything that's not anything that is not a two-hander like a heavy weapon you can benefit from dex now i haven't tested the heavy armor uh the heavy weapon so maybe it does scale with dex but i've just taken the wikis at its word and i haven't tested it much because the whole point is like glaive spears jab like stuff stuff like that right the quarter staffs like a monk that wields a weapon the caveat is going to be yes i know strength an armor uh strength fist is incredible even dex fist is going to be better than this because uh <laughs> Not using a weapon with a monk is just so broken with the items in the game. It's just crazy how many modifiers. Like, you literally doing... I think some, like, I think one of the builds I was doing up to 300 damage a turn using monk, rogue, and it's just crazy how much damage you can really do. Combination of rogue, fighter, monk, action search, stuff like that. Now, this build originated from actually my Shadowheart Lorefo Dr. Sissier build, and when I made the build, I wasn't really aware of the monk dip. And even in that case, it wasn't appropriate just because it wasn't what I was trying to accomplish. But for at least that kind of segue into what I want to do. So before the blade dancer idea, I was going to do a shadow monk that uses a weapon. It didn't really feel too good. I wasn't too much of a fan with it, but the thematics of it, the shadow stepping, the mobility, the synergy with the shards, spear of evening was incredible. There's a lot, a lot of good things here. And of course, if you're going to go one level of monk, you get that dexterous tax. It just kind of makes sense to go a little bit farther because we'll get the extra attack. If uh, we dip in the fighter late game, then we get our access to medium armor when we start getting those good medium armors with exo exotic material. And of course, with this variant, the idea of it is that we go shadow monk, we shadow step, we can shadow step anywhere in the battlefield, extreme mobility, get advantage on our next big melee attack. We can sneak attack. It's really easy to sneak attack with Rogue. And the thing about Rogue sneak attack is that I think about it like a mini smite with no spell slot con consummation, right? So what happens is, is that every odd level, you go from that 2D, you know, 1D6, 2D6, 3D6, and you get up to 66. It's not as good as a Paladin smite. You can't use it on reaction. You need the advantage, but it's easy to get advantage anyway. But the point is that you use it every turn. Now, I'll get into my preferred endgame build in a little bit, but for the Monk variant, you get the two bonus action with Thief, so you Shadow Set bonus action. Then you have your two attacks. One of those is going to be a sneak attack, which is going to be very, very big damage. And now we're using Dex. We're going to have, have 20 Dex on our build. We're going to have the plus 10 for Great Weapon Master. And then, you know, we're just going to have a lot, a lot of ways to really, really maximize my damage. I kind of, And of course, like if you do a Shadow Heart build, she kind of just has to be uh, a at least a little bit of a cleric, right? So that's my thought process so this is kind of like the shadow variant like the shadow monk combination with the rogue the play style and the build highlights are right here the issue with this is that you only get two feats so i actually was not completely honest you have to take Re great one master and then you would take uh asi and dex this is very very reliant on getting that shards mirror later in the game to get your uh ability to actually 20 and eclipse that there's no uh you know you can't use the unarmored uh chest the graceful cloth that gives you cat's grace that gives increases dex by two the cat's grace does not work with the dex gloves because the gloves set your uh dex to 18 the cat's grace from there on does not go from 18 to 20 your your dex is just 18 so don't think you can utilize that now for the early game you can see it here we just go monk that's going to be the preferred marshal if we go one level in the monk for dexterous attacks so we can dex use weapons uh for scaling and of course uh, it doesn't make much sense to ever go dipping early in the game if you're a martial class. The level 5 power spike is too good. There's arguments to be made that if you don't want to go 6-level uh, monk and you want to just rush that rogue or fighter, you can do that. It's really up to you guys. That's why I do the spreadsheet because if you uh, don't want to watch the video and you just like, okay, he did the intro, he talked about this, I have the information, you don't have to watch it anymore. Now you have the access, you don't have to go, oh... I have to go to this part. I don't have to go to the, Now you have everything here. I'll share this. Make it public. If you want, you can copy and paste it. And, you know, the whole thing about this is that, you know, what you can do, you just copy and paste this and like, oh, I want to use these three levels and I want to dip here instead. That's how easy it is for you to get a visual idea uh, from the spreadsheet. I normally do more uh, combinations of this, but I feel like it's not really necessary. Now, that is the whole idea. Again, you have the two bonus actions from the shadow variant of the monk. You get the deck scale eight attacks. You have... Uh, shadow step 
you have your sneak attack, you have your uh, attack, and then you still have your great weapon master attack that you're able to utilize. One note with Polon Master is that they did they keep talking about this in the patch, but the damage is not good enough. It doesn't use or uh, actually utilize your modifiers when you use Polon Master bonus action. And it's better to just use the bonus action to shadow step if you want for the advantage, and you then you can uh, utilize your great weapon master bonus action. Now, this is the early, early, early game. I don't think this is too viable late game. I'd rather just go uh, my preferred variant because I think the Dancing Breeze, thinking about the Glaive, the Brave Lucina, the Twin Blade, like that item is so goddamn cool. I talked about how aesthetically good it looks. And Shadowheart using that weapon, it's just so damn cool. You have that awesome AoE. I love, love, love that weapon. And the best thing about that weapon is that it really makes a Rogue Variant viable. Think about a fighter that has access to unlimited smites. Like, not as good as smites, but mini smites, right? That's kind of incredible when you really, really think about it. Because every turn, and in this variant, we don't go Thief because we don't really need to use bonus actions. Bonus actions scale much better with Monk compared to this. So we actually go Assassination. So if you utilize your fights late in the game very well, you always set up your Rogue, this uh, Blade Dancer, and use your Being Obscured being in stealth and you open the fight with your rogue you're going to get a lot of surprise uh you're going to get a lot of surprises when you're fighting and the best thing about assassin is that guarantee crit on a surprise but what's even better is that you use your big opener uh rogue and you can go uh, more rogue dip i talk about it right here you can go seven rogue if you don't want that extra feat but i do recommend the fighter because getting those three feats is very very important for the build especially if you messed up with the shards mirror or other ways to utilize increased decks so you get that opening in this case you're going to get a 4d6 and that's kind of incredible that's an extra almost you know 4 to 24 damage that scales very very well with savage attacker the ideal feats for this setup will be great weapon master asi from uh to 18 and you can get the other one in whatever you want or you can get alert or something like that just get that dex from 17 to 18 and then from there you can use a shards mirror to get the 20. That's incredible, right? You can use a Graceful Cloth, but I don't like that because getting a exotic material on your medium armor is going to get you like a 24, 25 base AC with no shield, with no buffs. You get other party members to get, get shield of face for you. You know, you, you get a lot of ways to increase AC. And then you have your Battlemaster uh, evasive maneuvers, and you have a lot of ways to passively increase your AC to where you're actually going to be tankier than my Guts variant. And of course... There's something that a lot of people don't forget. Oh, well, un, you know, unarmored monk or heavy armored monk use, utilizing tavern ball is better. Yeah, it's better, but you have a li limited economy when it comes to uh, items. You can't have like two or three monks that are all going to be super, super OP. There's diminishing returns on these classes and items, these legendary items, right? So that's kind of like, you're going to have like maybe two members in your party that aren't going to be completely overpowered. And if you want to restrict the overpoweredness, like the easiness of the game, even a tactician difficulty. It's a good way to make these loreful, more thematic builds and mm -hmm. challenge yourself this way. Oh. I don't know why I get these notifications. All right, so again, defeats, Grey Open Master, ASI to 18 or alert, another one that gets your decks, and then use Shard Spear to get to 20, that's plus five proficiency bonus. And then the last one would be Savage Attacker. Savage Attacker, I keep talking about this, guys. It is so, so good when it comes to uh, actually scaling your damage. This is my melee guts compendium. There's a lot of mathematical stuff here that explains why, you know, great weapon fighting is so good, why Savage Attacker is so good, and how much it scales as you uh, increase with smites, because of 2d8s. Every time you add a die roll, Savage Attacker gets more value. So that would be the idea, but if you can't uh, do Shards Mirror, if you don't have a way to increase that dexterity, then you can just use that other, you know, 2A size to get to 20 and Great Weapon Master. The way this build plays is just like a traditional fighter, except now you're utilizing sneak attacks and you do have to have a little bit more thought when you're going into melee. Some other awesome things that you get here is the Uncanny Dodge. Once a turn, you're going to take uh, half damage. Very, very good. With your high AC, this is very incredible. Uh, the fighter battle uh the fighter <laughs> i was gonna say senesi like uh, path of exile but the fighter subclass my favorite one is battle master because when you think about same thing with my sword saint when you think about a melee that's more nimble deck space i really really think about the battle master because you're utilizing actions you're not just smashing in there like a, a strength build like using your uh 
great sword, just your great hammer, great axe going in there like a rage monster. You're utilizing different, you know, maneuvers. You're, you're utilizing different techniques in melee. Like, I, I love through there. I love the AoE. I love the evasive maneuver. I love repulse. It's so, so cool. And again, action economy in games like this, even though it's not a hard game, it's still very, very good. And getting to superiority die, same thing with Monk, getting your resources on short rest, it's just, it's free. And pretty much the way I look at it with, with the Rogue Dip, you get the 4d6 every single round. It's just free damage. You're getting almost three attacks every single time. It's very, very good. Don't, you don't even have to like sneak around the battlefield either. Just have another melee. Use Illusion. Use uh, any type of pet, something like that, to trigger the advantage with sneak attack, and you have it every single turn. It's so, so good. And plus, the Rogue, you get the Skill Monkey. Now, one thing to know here is that you would respect to this later in the game, in the end game, once you get Dancing Breeze. And of course, you get it as soon as you get the Remington. Just go to the armory, buy it. It's the only finesse two-hander that lets you use this uh, sneak attack. I, I talked about this about two months ago, but it's so cool, and I love the animations. I love this build. Oh, I need to delete this. I don't know. This is a copy-paste from my other one. But that's really it. Uh, gear, everything is personal preference. For the gloves, I like uh, the Army Masters. Early in the game, use anything that gives you damage. One thing that's very, very good is Executioner's Ring with the guarantee to crit, especially with the AoE ability from Dancing Breeze. You know, you brace melee, do a little bit more damage, use your proficiency again, and then use your AoE attack with Dancing Breeze. And you'll see, I, I showed a couple of clips earlier. It's very, very good. Now, bonus discussion is going to be the Shar Spear of Edie. Now, this item is so incredible. I think you should go look back at my other Shadowheart lure build. Now, a lot of people don't go this route because this is the evil route and losing... I'll mark this uh, as spoilers, but losing Last Light in, and you lose a lot of options, like everybody dies, the Tieflings, it's like, ugh. It's hard, but that weapon is so goddamn broken. It is the best spear two-hander. Like, you can do spear and shield with that, but I like the Great Weapon Master variant with this, Shard Spear of Eden. There's even the Gloomstalker variant that I talked about in my other build that you can do. But, obviously, if you have that, you have the Darkness, Darkness Immunity... You have your shadow stepping everywhere. It's an incredible, incredible item. It really makes uh, Shadow Heart just like the ultimate Dark Justice CR. Other gear besides the gloves, the ornaments, that gives you a plus two flat attack and damage. Uh, Severox Helm is good. You know, Dark Justice CR Helm is good. Equip Dead Shot in your bow. And now you, with those two, you have a crit range of 18. When you're hiding, you get, you get the Cloak and Actory that reduces. Now you have a plus 17. And with the advantage, you'll see right here. How good that crit range is. So not going champion with those three conditions. Hiding, Sever Rocks, or Dr. Sirius Helm while obscured. And then the dead shot in Act 3 once you get to a Baldur's Gate. Look at you. Now you're at a 30% crit chance. And I get, you know, I actually didn't even, like, abuse uh, my footage when I was doing my clips with Shadowheart. Because, like, the crit chance is so good. Like, that's how crazy the crit chance gets, guys. And, of course, advantage is very, very easy. If you have any questions, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. I should have said that before that. And I apologize for another late video, but it's life is hitting me in the face. So that's pretty much it. I really, really hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys, you know, I, I you know me, I love doing the thematics. I love doing actually lore appropriate builds. And this isn't super lore appropriate, but it's kind of like thematic appropriate, right? So uh, those who in that ground tech, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy.